Good morning, and welcome to our little Bible study here from the Ten Commandments we have here at Herkman Baptist Church. A little ten-minute Bible study we've been doing here. For, well, this is part 40 of the Ten Commandments study, and we're on to the Tenth Commandment. Uh, we finally reached that tenth one, Thou shall not covet. And, uh, you know, we studied about the killing and the stealing and uh, the adultery, the lying. We've covered all those. And um, you see, this is, has to do with the covetousness. And uh, the definition of covetousness is a predominant desire or thought, a desire or thought that craves, lusts, and yearns, that just eats away at the human heart. And uh, what is really strange about covetousness, it's a, it's a heart thing, but all these other ones that we read about and studied about, the, the, the killing and the, the adultery, the lying, and uh, those things, the stealing, those, those all are an outgrowth of the covetousness that when we start seeing things that we want and we, we you know if you, people see uh, um, uh, money that they want or they have a, a position that they want and somebody else has it and it starts eating at them and pretty soon it overcomes when they start lying and cheating and stealing or whatever to, to get that get that uh, desire fulfilled and that's just a human nature we covetousness is something we have to watch out for we have to be careful and uh, we know that uh, the other side of that coin that we're, we can look at is contentment. So as we look at this uh, Tenth Commandment, we'll be finishing up here probably about three or four lessons here on this, and we'll be finished with this study. But we know covetousness, it's one of the things, it covers so many parts of life. I mean, like I said, you know, dispositions, money, power, all those kind of things. And what it does, it, uh, it just causes so many problems within our society. So uh, kind of going along with our outline that we've been uh, going through here for the last uh, nine commandments is who was to obey this commandment? And we know it says uh, thou, so you, I, we all of us were to obey the commandment. It's not for, no one is exempt from it. Uh, we are to obey it. Uh, how long was it to be enforced? Well, as long as man exists, uh, this commandment is enforced. Uh, it's the tenth one. It's God uh, kept it on purpose, I believe, to the, the last one to, because it uh, all the rest of them kind of come out of this at one time or another, or in one form or another. So we, uh, let me just read that uh, commandment to you here. He says that thou shalt not covet at thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor. Again, the word idea of covet is to desire something, to look at what your neighbor has and and it's not only that you, you like it and you'd like to have, uh, maybe you'd like to have a home like he's got or a truck like he's got or something like that, uh, but you want his. You want that and you want to take that away to he don't have it and you have it. And that's probably the most uh, the damning part of that uh, the act of covetousness. So we see who's to obey it, how long is it in force. So what's forbidden? Well, we know basically it's not, thou shalt not covet. But the question comes up then, how does a man actually break this commandment? The, the average person, how do, how do you and I just break this commandment? Well, when we look at something, uh, when I look, we look at something that someone else has, uh, we talked about the wife, the property, possessions, and all those kind of things, his, his servants. Uh, when you, you look at that with a desire to have it, to have what he's got, then, then you've broken that commandment. See, God really, what He wants you to do, if you have your you have your home, your family and everything, He wants you to feel safe and secure in that. He wants you to have some, some comfort, some peace there, to feel safe and secure and protected, and not have to worry about what you have. Not have to worry about your wife or your, your cattle or your possessions or anything like that. But uh, we know that because of covenants, we do. We are concerned, and uh, we have to watch out for it. Be aware of it. And especially in our lives, we might, sometimes we get the idea that, you know, I, I would never get to that point. But it covers such a broad range of things that we can get into it, and you really don't realize it. It's like a lot of things in life, a lot of, a lot of sin. Uh, we can get so gradually into it, the next thing you know, uh, we're caught up with it, and uh, it's getting a hold of us more and more. So... Uh, we're going to look at this. Uh, the idea of coveting, uh, that's one of those words, that's kind of a neutral word. If you can use that word, it, it, on one hand it's good, and on the other hand it's bad. And at we get to the end of this lesson, we'll, we'll do some of that uh, 
checking what, what's the good part and what's the bad part. What should we covet and what should we not covet. Uh, the good things like love and joy and peace, uh, desire to be successful, fulfilled, satisfied. Those are all good things. There's nothing wrong with that. And so we should seek you know, the, the good and the perfect gifts, uh, those things that, uh, that are beneficial to us and our family and our, our walk of life. It, again, we don't have to to want to do better, you know, to work harder or to have more for yourself and for your family. It, that that's not the extent of covetousness. It's when you want to take it away from somebody else. You don't want them to have it. You want to have it. Over in James one seventeen says, "Every good gift and every perfect gift, gift is from above, and it cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning." So we see the, the gifts that we want, the good gifts, the perfect gifts are given to us by God. The things that we that we want, the things that we need, uh, God's going to provide for us. He, he's going to give us those good gifts. Uh, and again, it gets back to the fruit of the Spirit and the idea of being successful, being fulfilled, uh, having those things that, that help us get through this life in a way that, that honors God. Uh, sometimes, you know, we know the, rough, the road's not always smooth. Sometimes it gets rough. So we want to be careful. We want to be focused on what we have and rejoice in what we have. Uh, God is, that's what God wants us to have. And, you know, God don't make any mistakes. So you see the idea is uh, in 1 Corinthians 12, 31, it says, but, but covet earnestly the best gifts. And he's getting into the gifts of the Spirit as we get into that study over in 1 Corinthians. But just for that one verse, but covet earnestly the best gifts, and yet show I unto you a more excellent way. So the good gifts, the perfect gifts come from above. They're given to us by God. The Father wants us to have them, and that's what He prepares us for. He gives us things to help us in the ministry as we minister here. Whether you're a pastor or teacher or just uh, a person that works in the church, uh, we're all Christians. We all have a, a ministry. We all have a work to do, and He wants us to be equipped to do that ministry. And we want to be content with that ministry that He gives us and how He provides for us to, to meet those needs. So we see the idea is the, that's the good sense. In the bad sense now, coveting in the bad sense includes when a man's desire, like another man's wife, property, or anything belonging to another. Again, that's that's the bad kind. Over in uh, Colossians uh, three five, it says, "Mortify or put to death, kill. Therefore, your members which are upon the earth, fornication, unclean, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, covetousness, which is idolatry. For which things, for that sake, the wrath of God comes on the children of disobedience." So he said, "What you need to do as a Christian now, okay? We we put to death." He said, mortify, put to death your members which are upon the earth. And he lists them there, the different ones, but if we get down to that one we're looking at here, it's covetousness long. And look at the list that, that this is part of the fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, and a, which is idolatry. So what we're doing is we're taking something that we want, and we're not satisfied with what God has given us. We want something that somebody else has. And that's, that becomes a idol to us. What is an idol? An idol is anything that comes between you and God. And it can be some things that can be good that don't necessarily have to be a bad thing. Uh, family can come between you and God and become an idol. Uh, job, profession can become an idol. Uh, your own your own body, your own life you can, can become an idol. You can think more of yourself and be more worried about what your health is and what you look like and all these things than you are about serving the Lord. It becomes an idol to you. And so he says we need to be careful. Put to death those other desires. Uh, those are the desires of the lost person. Those are the desires that we had before we were saved. And we need to put those to death and, and focus on the things that we need, the things we need to do, the good things. And we just talked about those like love and joy and peace. To be successful, be fulfilled, be satisfied. Those are things we strive for, but not at the cost of someone else, to take it away from someone else. So we'll kind of get us started here on the study, and, and we'll probably have a few more lessons in, in uh, talking about covetousness and, and how we deal with it and what we should do. So let's just pray. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this study. We, we pray, Lord, as we walk this pathway of life that we would find contentment in what you've given us, what you provide for us, Lord. And, and that covetousness would not uh, enter into our minds and into our hearts. So just be with each one of us. Uh, help us to be a light in this dark world. Uh, help us to live the kind of life and that will bring others to Christ. And for those that may not know Christ, we pray that you would touch their hearts, open our eyes, that they might repent, turn, and put their faith and trust in the shed blood of Jesus as payment for their sins. We thank you for loving us. We thank you for what you're doing in our lives. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.